Hey everyone, so today we're going to cover everything you ever wanted to know about Medical Science Liaison Board Certification or Board Certification for MSLs. So as the founder of the ACMA, I get a lot of questions about the differences between different types of board certifications. Is it necessary? Is it important? So forth and so on. So I'm going to talk about that today and remove all the hype, the myth, and give you the real deal and kind of the scoop into what it's really all about and whether it's something you should pursue or not pursue. So first, what is board certification? When you think about any other uh, profession in the medical field, the health field, the life sciences field, you're very familiar with board certification. For example, if you ever visited a specialist, a cardiologist, a uh, dermatologist, they're board certified, many of them. And what does that mean to be board certified? It ultimately means that they've had to meet additional external levels of uh, competency, uh, past certain assessments to ensure that, that they basically have a certain body of knowledge, experience, et cetera, that sets them apart from other healthcare providers in a similar, let's say, specialty or therapeutic area, right? They had to meet additional competency standards. And so that gives you a little bit more confidence in their ability to carry out their craft. They're really the experts, right, in the space. So board certification for medical science liaisons is the same thing, right? Medical science liaisons, remember from my other video, they are by training usually pharmacists, the majority, and there's also physicians and PhD professionals. That's the, that's the three kind of major categories. Now, there's other types of MSLs. There are nurses or MSLs. There are physician assistants, DOs, psych Ds, people with master's degrees, depending on the role. So it covers all those you know, degrees as well. But the majority, if you look at the, the data in our organization, the ACMA, we're the foremost organization that captures that data. We actually have the largest database of medical affairs and MSL professionals in the world because we have the tens of thousands of users in over 80 countries that are board certified through us. And we know from the research that we've done and the data that we've collected, the majority of the people are pharmacists, then, like I said, PhDs and MDs. So then the question is, well, if you have a doctorate degree, why do you need to have a board certification? What gives? Well, for many of you listening out there, um, you know that if you have a Pharm PharmD degree from a pharmacy school or you're an MD or like me, you're a PhD you're not really trained to work in the pharmaceutical industry, right? You're not. You know, for your physician, for example, you are trained to diagnose, treat patients. You're trained to do surgeries, right? Um, you're trained really to be in a clinical setting. That's really what you're trained to do in medical school. Makes sense. Because that's what the majority of physicians do. But if you're an industry physician, right, and you have to design a clinical trial, or you have to review safety data, or you have to generate or critically, critically appraise data, that's different. It's a different skill set. Same thing with pharmacists. Uh, most pharmacists are trained to work in retail, work in the clinical or hospital setting. Again, they're not really trained to work in industry. And we know this. The ACMA's presented posters, published research on this. If you go to our website, you'll find that. Most pharmacists, 72% said, we actually weren't equipped and prepared to work in the pharmaceutical industry. Now, me as a PhD, I could speak from firsthand reference as a PhD, I went to Columbia University for my PhD. I was never trained to work in the pharmaceutical industry. I was really trained to be in the lab, right? And my background's in, you know, biochemistry, biomolecular chemistry, chemistry education. That's what I did. So my background really was to, to know how to do carry out science, do experiments, do research, educate, so forth and so on. So that's the reason why we need board certification for this particular field because the competencies, the skills, the knowledge you need today to be a, an, an effective MSL or medical science liaison is very different than what it was, I would say, 20, 25 years ago when I first started in this space. Today's medical science liaison needs to have a much broader set of skills. They need to understand things like pharmacovigilance, health economic outcomes research, how to design clinical trials, how to interpret evidence, biostatistics. They need to understand pharmacogenomics, devices, regular. There's a bunch of different things. They deal with a much broader group of stakeholders than they did years ago. You know, years ago, you'd meet with a key opinion leader. Now we call them key decision maker or external expert. Today, you're meeting with payers and regulatory folks. So the skill set is very different. 
The skill set itself is very, very different that you need to be effective in the field. And by the way, we know this. We've collected data from over 185 companies to help us build out our board certification. So let's talk about that. Now, there's board certifications out there. What's the difference? So the first thing is the first ever board certification was from the ACMA. In 2016, we established the Board Certified Medical Affairs Specialist Program or BCMAS program. Now that program contains 20 modules. That program contains knowledge checks, resources, a glossary, uh, case studies, you name it. So that really, from my perspective in working in industry, was really the most comprehensive program ever built for the MSL medical affairs profession. And today, actually, we have a BCMAS versions for every region of the world. So if you're in the Middle East, North Africa, there's a BCMAS version for you. If you are in Europe, there's a BCMAS EU. If you're in Canada, there's a BCMAS Canada. You might be wondering, well, why do you have to have different versions? Remember, if you're not in the industry and you don't know this, the regulatory and compliance framework varies by country, by region. So, for example, in Canada, they don't have the FDA, right? They have Health Canada. So those nuances we actually account for. Because a lot of times when we work with companies, they, they might have 500 people around the world and they want to board certify them. Every region is going to have a little bit of a different need. So the first one out was BCMAS. And then about, I want to say five, six years later, the MSL Society came out with their board certification program. Now, in the beginning, by the way, mind you, MSLBC, which is what it's called, the MSL board certification, had no accreditation. BCMAS program is accredited. It's accredited a few different ways, through the International Accreditors for Continuing Education and Training under the American National Standards Institute. It also has accreditation through our partner, Sanchez CME, through the Accreditation Council for Continuing Medical Education and the Accreditation Council for Pharmacy Education. What that means is that the BCMAS program is the only board certification program where you get CE credits to maintain your licensure as a pharmacist, as a physician in the U.S. That's a big deal because to be able to get that, you have to go through a lot of um, processes and getting audited to be able to say, yes, we uh, bless this program and say that it meets the criteria to get uh, the ability to be able to deliver CE credits to pharmacists and physicians to maintain a licensure. That's a big deal. But that really speaks more to, you know, the level of quality of the content. We also update our content quarterly. We have a whole team that does this. So that's really important to understand. First ever program is BCMAS, really the only accredited program through these different venues and the only one that offers CE credits. Five years later, like I said, the, the MSL Society came out with one and it's called the MSLBC only for MSLs for it's a very limited use and only an exam. Only an exam. When it first came out, only an exam. So really no comprehensive training. It, it didn't give you that skill set and knowledge that you needed. It really just had to pass an exam. And then another one that came out very soon after that was from an organization called From Science to Pharma. Again, no accreditation. Uh, it's not really clear who created it. It's not really clear who's behind it. That's always scary to me. So I would question that the validity there. Um, and so those are the three main ones, right? But when people ask, well, what's the difference? You know, wh why would I do one versus the other? My answer is always the same. Number one, you want to go with an organization that has experience working in the industry for, for many, many years that's been out there for now. We've been out there almost for a decade and that has a knowledge of a curriculum that's built through data. We're the only ones that use data to build out a curriculum, a full fresh cur curriculum. Unlike the other organizations that really just give you an exam, and then there's you know there's, you know at least in one of the organizations uh, some videos. So really, it's 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 not something that's even comparable from my perspective. Um, so really, from my standpoint, when you go to look at doing a board certification, it's really a no-brainer to choose BCMAS. BCMAS by far exceeds any of the other programs that are out there. There's a bunch of other copycat programs coming out, but I could tell you uh, from my perspective, if you're listening and you want to do a board certification as an MSL, BCMAS is absolutely positively the way to go. Any of the other board certifications are not really recognized within the industry. Many positions prefer BCMAS 
positions that are hiring for these roles. Uh, if you listen to some of the webinars, the ACMA, you'll find that many leaders will say, if I have someone who's a BCMAS, I look at that as a more preferable candidate because I know they've had to meet stringent competency standards. In the future, from my perspective, board certification is going to be a must have. In the future, board certification will be a must have. A recent McKinsey paper that came out, which is looking at kind of the vision for medical affairs in 2030, addresses the issue of upskilling and upgrading performance and establishing uniformity for an organization. And this is why many organizations work with the ACMA. We work with over 250 pharmaceutical companies around the world. And this is also why we have a dedicated team. We're the only organization in the world that has a dedicated team of experts internally. We also have experts who work with externally as well that are constantly updating the program's curriculum and content every few months. So you're getting fresh, up-to-date content. We have a 24-7 live chat support team. So really, from my standpoint, again, you know, BCMS is here. Really, all these other programs are at a different level. Do I think that MSL Society does a great job of putting together a great conference? Absolutely. They do a great job in putting together a great meeting for MSLs. I have no doubt about that, and I commend them for that. But when it comes to accreditation and board certification, the go-to place really is the ACMA. I hope that helps, and I hope that um, you guys are you know, able to kind of use this to make an informed decision. If you have any comments, questions about board certification, feel free to, me, feel free to drop me a comment in the uh, video below the video and let me know what other topics you're interested in hearing more about.